Hi, I'm Galen and Avery. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript fills you in on the upcoming municipal elections, sits down with the girls' soccer team, and tackles the issue of abuse in the music industry. On Tuesday, a 29-year-old man drove a truck into a bike path in Lower Manhattan in New York City, killing eight people and injuring 11. The suspect, who immigrated to the U.S. in 2010 from Uzbekistan, is currently in police custody in New York City. Investigators have determined that the attack was premeditated and conducted in the name of ISIS and believe that the suspect was radicalized domestically. In response, President Trump has advocated increasing his extreme vetting program and ending a so-called diversity immigration program. On Monday, the U.S. Justice Department announced the indictment of Paul Manafort, President Trump's former campaign chairman. Mr. Manafort and a former business associate pled not guilty to 12 felony counts, including money laundering, false statements, and acts of conspiracy against the U.S. This is the first indictment from special counselor Robert Mueller's investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election. Additionally, Trump campaign advisor George Papadopoulos pled guilty on one count of lying to FBI agents involved in the investigation. This week, more allegations of sexual harassment were leveled against men in Hollywood, the media, and world politics. On Wednesday, the NPR News chief was ousted following accusations of sexual assault and harassment. NBC News and The Atlantic have also fired contributors in recent weeks. Following Harvey Weinstein's recent lifetime ban from the Producers Guild of America, accusations have been leveled against several other men in Hollywood, including Kevin Spacey. Additionally, allegations of sexual harassment have been growing within Britain's parliament, and the British Defense Minister resigned on Wednesday after accusations. Hi, I'm Fleur Castillo. Welcome back to Tell It Like It Is. This week we are discussing the upcoming 2017 municipal elections. The Northampton Municipal Elections are to be held on Tuesday, November 7th in our own gymnasium and other locations around the city. Many of the positions up for election are mayor, city clerk, ward councillors, school committee members and more. However, only mayor, city clerk and ward 6 school committee are contested. John Riley and David Nakowicz are running for major. Bob Driscoll and Pamela Powers are running for city clerks. Thomas Davidson and Lonnie Kaufman are running for War 6 School Committee. I sat down with Pamela Powers to discuss her experience as an interim Northampton City Clerk. Well, the role of the City Clerk is to oversee the operations of the office. And one of the most important things that we do here in the City Clerk's office is elections. One of the things that we see when it comes to a federal election is that people are willing to come out to the polls to vote. So the turnout might be as high as 50% in the city. Uh, for a municipal election or sometimes even a state election, we don't see as high of a turnout. So for a municipal election, especially one where there's not a lot of hotly contested races, we might see the turnout to be as little as uh, 20%. I also sat down with Gina Luis Sierra, a city councillor in Ward 4, to discuss how the two races, city clerk and major, leave the vast majority to not contested and this present voters with little choice. So there are only two contested races right now in Northampton. Well, that's not entirely true. There are two major contested races. There is the mayor's race and the city clerk race. There's also um, there, the Ward 6 school committee race has two people running in it. Um, and there are a couple people who are running as write-in candidates um, for one for school committee and one for city council. So there's a little bit more choice there than I think people are realize. But generally, here in Northampton, we often have uncontested races. That is not unusual. This is a particularly um, slow year, which is kind of surprising, I think, to a lot of us because as I, right after the election, there was a lot of interest and in, in the message that people were getting were, you know, the best thing you can do is, is get involved in local politics. And we saw, you know, in January and February, we saw a ton of people coming to city council meetings and really expressing interest in local government. And that's sort of fallen away, which is too bad. 
I, I wish that we had more interest. Um, as I said, it's kind of a challenge, they're challenging jobs and they are not paid as a full salary, in particular city council or school committee. So it's really something that um, sometimes people have to do part time and it's a, it's a big commitment. Um, I would love to see a way to make our government more representative. I went out to ask Northampton citizens about the upcoming elections to forecast results. Many people did not have a clear decision to vote. Are you planning on voting on these upcoming elections? Uh, I hadn't planned on it. I want to, but I haven't been like following it whatsoever. So, um, are you plan are you planning on voting these upcoming municipal elections? Yes. Um, who are you planning on voting for? I don't know yet. I still have to do some research. <laughs> Many senior students in NHS are already registered to vote. If you are 18 years and older, I encourage you to vote in these upcoming municipal elections. I'm Flor Castillo. Thanks for watching. Tell it like it is. Hi, I'm Gabe Nicotera. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Girls Soccer, the skilled team at Northampton High School, has officially ended their regular season. On October 20th, Sydney White recorded her 500th save as a goalkeeper in her high school career. This week, I sat down with her as well as senior Alex Bertuch Wallace on their last season playing for the high school. We've had uh, a very solid end to the season. We've gone about 8-0-1 the past uh, second half of our season. So going into playoffs, we have a very strong schedule and we got a good seating. We're ranked third in Western Mass. Definitely we have a really strong junior class this year. Um, everyone has stepped up and taken a really more maturing role in their position on the field and I think that next year when we leave they will step up even more and have a really good impact on, for the team. Just to add on to that, we have a rising junior to uh, Sid Lewandowski will be starting in goal next year and she's played with me for the past two years and I think that going into her junior and senior year she's going to be a really strong asset to the team and she's going to take it take on a really big leadership role. It was time to take my skills to the field, so I decided to shoot on Sydney to see how good we really both are. We're going to win anyway. Yes! Yeah, it got past you. If I had, if I had to pick a second uh, position on the field, I would probably say I'd be a striker, just because of my phenomenal foot skills. The girls' soccer team has their first playoff game, a home game, against Westfield High School on Tuesday afternoon. Both cross-country teams start their playoff matches on Sunday. The girls' race starts at 1 o'clock, and the boys' race starts at 4 o'clock. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Gabe Nicotera. Hi, I'm Odette Bennis, and welcome back to Hit It or Miss It, where all things pop culture and style are covered. Recently, disturbing new details were released in a domestic abuse case between popular rapper ex Success Tentaciones and his ex-girlfriend. Ex has been charged with aggravated battery of a pregnant woman, false imprisonment, domestic battery by strangulation, and witness tampering. Despite the public knowing of the case, X still has a large fan base and continues to have support from his fans. This trend has showed up in cases of other celebrities such as Johnny Depp, Chris Brown, Charlie Sheen, CeeLo Green, and many others. This brings up the question, why do artists who have cases of domestic violence still have a large fan base? Does the music industry have an abuse culture or does it perpetuate it? I sat down with Marianne Winters, the executive director of Safe Passage, a social service organization for victims of domestic abuse in Northampton, to find out about the mental and physical abuse in a domestic violence case. The better question is, why do people perpetrate violence in relationships? So I think until we, as a society, can go to that question first, we're not going to get an answer. But the you know, the real answer from real life situations is again a range, similar to the range of impacts. Um, one of the biggest dynamics is fear. And so if violence has happened in a relationship, very often that, has, that goes along with threats. You leave me and I will hurt your family. I will kill the pet. I will, you'll be penniless. You know, I will take the kids in court. And in the case of someone who has more power because they're a star in the music industry. Um, I have the money to hire the lawyers to take your child away to, um, you know, and sometimes there's even violence to like, 
you know, take out a contract on your mother or on whoever's. So, you know, abusive people are very good at finding out what the vulnerable points are and what's important to the victim and then threatening to take that away. Even after details of abuse cases come out, often artists continue to remain popular and still bring in revenue. To get a student's point of view, I talked with feminist collective member and NHS junior Zali Amaya. A lot of people enjoy his music, but they still don't think that what he did was good at all. Um, and so they feel that they can say stuff like, oh, I like his music, but like that doesn't mean I like him as a human being, but you're still supporting him and his career and his lifestyle while you're supporting his music. What do you believe? Do you believe the music industry has a problem of domestic abuse? Does the industry have an abuse culture? I'm Odette Bennis, and I'll see you next week on Hit It or Miss It. Thanks for watching. Make sure to go to nhstechnology.org to watch Eli and Christian run for mayor in this week's online extra. And please join me at the next meeting of the Mayor's Youth Commission, in which we will discuss what important issues to tackle this year. The next meeting is in City Hall at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, November 15th.